The stars in boxing make an absurd amount of money, while the UFC stars do not. So take a couple Saturdays ago on August 20th, when UFC 278, headlined by Kamaru Usman and Leon Edwards, happened on the same day as Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk too. Kamaru Usman made $750,000 with a $42,000 sponsorship bonus, while Leon Edwards made $400,000 with an additional $100,000 for the win and $32,000 for a sponsorship bonus. Leon Edwards also made an additional $50,000 for his performance of the night when he KO'd Kamaru Usman late in the fifth round. Now if we go back to the boxing event that took place this day, Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk split a fight purse of $150 million, and that was just the guaranteed fight purse. This doesn't include any sponsorships or any of the undisclosed pay-per-view money that they would both split at the end of this night. So if you've been a fan of combat sports, this is nothing new. The pay disparity between the stars in the UFC and the stars in boxing is outstanding. UFC fighters would be considered extremely lucky if they were able to crack that $1 million mark, while the stars in boxing routinely make tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars for one night. So why is there such a huge disparity between the fight purses of stars in boxing and the fight purses of the stars in the UFC. So before I get into the explanation of why the stars in boxing get paid much more than the stars in the UFC, we have to specify that we're only talking about the stars here. We are not going to be talking about the average boxer as the average boxer makes much less than the average UFC fighter. So this brings us to the reason as to why the stars in boxing make much more money than the stars in the UFC. It's simply due to how each sport is structured. So if you're a returning viewer of mine, you've probably heard me say that the sport of boxing is messy. There's multiple promotions, there's multiple belt organizations, and most importantly, there is no one governing body. So in the sport of MMA, it's a little different because there really is only one governing body, the UFC. And yes, I know there are other promotions such as Bellator, but the UFC owns 80 to 90% of the market share in the Western Hemisphere. And then when it comes to the Eastern Hemisphere, 1FC does own 80% of that, but they have reported tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars of losses each year. There practically is no competition for the UFC and there actually has been lawsuits against the UFC claiming that they are a monopoly. And it's very hard to see them as otherwise. So in boxing, I like to see it as a free market. There are multiple promotions and it's very, very competitive. Now this gives a boxer a lot of freedom in terms of negotiating contracts and getting competitive pay. I mean, if they're not happy with the pay they're getting at one promotion, they can easily jump ship to another promotion and get better pay. Now in terms of the MMA, there really is only one promotion, the UFC. So it's really hard to negotiate a contract or seek competitive pay because there are no competitors. So to really demonstrate how the structure of each sport impacts the stars' fight purses, let's take two events from each respective sport, take the revenue from each event and compare it between the two and see how the money is divided. And to really showcase the insane disparity between the fight purses of the stars in the UFC and the stars in boxing, I decided to pick an event in the UFC that made more money than an event in boxing, but despite this, the stars in the UFC in that event made less money than the stars in the event in boxing. So take UFC 196, which was headlined by Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor 1. This made $80 million in total revenue. So this is pay-per-view buys, ticket sales, and everything in between. And for boxing, let's take Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko, which made $68 million. And looking at the fight purses, Nate Diaz made $620,000, while Conor McGregor made the first $1 million fight purse in the UFC. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko split a purse of 30 million pounds, so each of them got around 15 million pounds or 17 million US dollars. Despite the UFC event making 12 more million dollars than the boxing event, the stars in the boxing event were paid 14 million dollars or more than the stars in the UFC event. So Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz only took home around 2% of the total revenue made in UFC 196. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko damn near took half of the revenue that was made up in their event. And these percentages are not just specific to these events alone. The UFC typically pays their fighters around 16% of the total revenue, while other leagues such as the NFL or even Bellator and boxing with no league pays their fighters around 40 to 50% of the total revenue. So as you can see, the structure of each sport drastically changes how much the stars in each event 
make in their fight purses. So in the MMA, the UFC is essentially the league and Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor are simply just employees or players within the league. So they're inclined to only as much money the UFC wants to give them and the UFC is going to take a majority of the money that was made through that event and bring it back into the brand and bring it back to the league. Meanwhile, in our boxing event, Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko are kind of like their two separate companies coming together to merge for this event. They are the ones who made this event and thus they have no one to answer to. They made this event so they deserve a majority of that money. I know there's promoters and managers and broadcasters that these boxers have to hire, but essentially they were the draws to this event. And George St. Pierre, a personal favorite UFC fighter of mine and one of the greatest of all time, perfectly describes this in this Joe Rogan clip. If you look at the UFC, for example, look at UFC the way they promote the event. UFC is like the Vaseline of petrol jelly. Right. People don't say, hey, I watch mixed martial art. They say, I watch UFC. Right. So the way they promote it, it's UFC 226, uh, this guy versus this guy on the bottom. But they promote the UFC. Right. They don't promote the fighter. They promote mostly the brand. And it's very smart because that they, they have the monopoly over the others, right? Right. Which in boxing... They build up their, their, their fighter because the money is on the fighter. It's not on the IBF title. or Yes, it, it's IBF title, but it's People don't care. Canelo versus Mayweather. Right. And then on the bottom, you know for what they're fighting for, right, right. which in the UFC is the opposite. Yeah. So besides the major difference in how the money is split up in each sports event, there is also the opportunity for a boxer to make hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars from sponsorships, something that the UFC stars do not have. When boxing, you've probably noticed that the biggest stars wear some of the biggest brands on their shorts. From Dolce & Gabbana, Hublot, and Christian Dior, I would assume that these sponsorship deals are worth hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. Meanwhile, in the UFC, Dana White made one of the most outrageous and infamous deals simply known as the Reebok deal. This deal made Reebok essentially the sole sponsor of UFC gear, so UFC fighters could no longer take sponsorships to wear on their pants or any of their gear. This reportedly made UFC fighters lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars and completely removes the opportunity for UFC fighters to make more money outside of just their fight purse. Now today, Venom is the sole sponsor of the UFC and they do offer sponsorship bonuses, but they only cap out to $42,000 and you still cannot have any other sponsorship on your gear besides Venom. So again, because the UFC is the controlling league and the UFC fighters are simply just their employees, they really have no say in this and they have to follow this Reebok deal. So another thing that boxers have that UFC fighters don't have is the Muhammad Ali Reform Act or simply known as the Ali Act. So this federal act that was passed in 2000 protects boxers from some of the exploitation that was done by promoters slash managers in the 1990s. This act actually officially recognized that boxing is one of the few sports where there is no league or one commissioner. So this act was essentially made to protect boxers in such a weird structured sport. Now this act does a number of different things such as preventing promoters to be the same thing as managers, requiring promoters, sanctioning bodies and everybody who is a part of a boxing event to disclose their financials and how much money they made and most importantly it requires that sanctioning bodies or whoever ranks these boxers to be independent of promoters. Now this one is very important because this prevents a situation like the UFC where fighters are dependent on the promotion to be ranked. In boxing, the belt organizations are responsible for ranking the fighters and they're completely independent of the promoters who are simply just promoting their fighters. So basically, fighters can move up the ranks independent of whatever promotion they're with. So because promotions are always trying to promote a belt holder or a top ranked fighter, this kind of turns into a bidding war between the promotions. They're going to try to pay that boxer with the most money and outbid everybody else, which obviously is good for the boxer because they're going to get the most money out of all the promotions. Meanwhile, in the MMA, because the UFC is the top promotion and you're kind of dependent on the UFC to get yourself ranked or get a belt, there really is no bidding war. You're completely dependent on the UFC to get promoted and get ranked. Like imagine if the Ali Act was extended to the MMA and the UFC. Let's take for instance Israel Adesanya, who is the champion at 185. Because he is the champ and he's well known and really high ranked, in this hypothetical, Bellator and 1FC would be able to bid for Israel Adesanya's promotional rights and 
Basically, this would turn into a bidding war where the UFC would have to pay Israel Adesanya more money or he would leave their promotion for 1FC or Bellator. So before I conclude this video, I wanted to mention the argument that boxing is an older sport slash is more popular so that it brings more eyes to boxing than the UFC. Thus, there is more money in boxing. This may or may not be the case, but boxing in the UFC in the last seven years has been very comparable to both pay-per-view buys and revenue. Since 2015, the UFC has had 12 events that amass over 1 million pay-per-view buys, while boxing has only had 9 if you exclude YouTube boxing events. And earlier in this video, I also showed an example where two events, one in the UFC and one in boxing, made similar amounts of revenue, but the split between the boxers or the fighters in the promotion was vastly different. So again, the fighter pay isn't necessarily because boxing is more popular than the UFC as the pay-per-view numbers and the revenue is very comparable. So it really comes down to the structure of each sport. In boxing, there is no governing body or one league. So boxers are essentially their own league. And if they're the main event stars, they're gonna take home most of the money. Whereas the UFC is the dominant league or the dominant governing body in the MMA. This means that they can strip away sponsorship deals or opportunities, and with a lack of protection like the Ali Act in boxing, the UFC can continue to promote and rank their fighters, making their fighters extremely dependent on the organization, which basically prevents a bidding war or a free market that we see in boxing for its fighters. So what do you guys think? I think there's a lot of pros and cons when it comes to the structures of boxing and the UFC. I think on this channel, I've mainly focused on the cons of the structure of boxing. But again, one of the biggest pros with this structure is that boxers get millions and millions of dollars. Now, this may come at a cost for us fans because we get a bunch of bogus undefeated records, super fights being delayed, boxing politics, multiple belts. But ultimately, boxers are getting the back. And um, this concludes this video. Please subscribe. I did not expect this video to be this long. And I know I'm going to have a pain in the ass when I edit this later. So again, please subscribe. Peace.